Hi, I'm Nathan from Serious Geeks, and this latest Tactica video is going to cover the Annihilation Barge for Codex Necron's 9th edition. As most of us are aware, there is a lean towards infantry in most competitive games, and indeed, even our more casual games, infantry seem to do the most for the least amount of points investment, simply because Melter and other weapons that are really good at killing vehicles have become so widespread throughout the game now. Indeed, this is made worse by Space Marines being such a popular army and going up to two wounds apiece, which means their basic infantry are an incredibly survivable force, and they can do a lot on the table and can bring a lot of power, as well as lots of cheap access to melter weapons, which further makes it difficult for vehicles to oppose them. So, on the surface of it, Annihilation Barges, with their primarily anti-infantry weaponry, look to be a very effective choice. They have long range to stay away from melter attacks, and they have a lot of shots. However, they do have a bit of a flaw, and I will cover that when I go through the weapons and the summary at the end. So, starting off with things, common with all my tacticas, I like to begin with the stat line. If we look at the stat line of Annihilation Barges, they have a decent movement. Movement at 12 is a benchmark when it comes to vehicles, and it's quite fast. It's twice the speed of basic line infantry, so it's very useful. Weapon skill 6+, plus, which combined with the attacks of 3, doesn't make for a particularly offensive close combat force, but that's not why you would take most vehicles. They have the good old ballistic skill of 3+, plus, which is standard throughout most Necron forces, but also it's a benchmark of consistency. They have strength 5, which isn't very high, but combined with the attacks and weapon skill 6+, plus, you're not going to be doing much damage in close combat. Toughness 6, which is also fairly low, it means that auto cannons are going to be wounding you on 3+, plus, which is fairly problematic. It means that you, as a light vehicle, you're going to suffer a lot of damage from weapons that are designed to hurt light vehicles, such as auto cannons. It also only has 8 wounds, which puts it in Dreadnought category. It's essentially as tough, more or less, as a Dreadnought, which isn't terrible, but it's not going to be particularly effective at taking a lot of hits on the table, but it doesn't degrade, which is always good. Lastly, as a 3 plus armor save, which combined with 8 wounds and toughness of 6 isn't too bad, and it has a leadership of 10, which is useful if you get targeted with weapons that affect your leadership and cause mortal wounds. Um, not very many of them in the game, but you never know. Now, the movement of 6+, plus, combined with obscuring terrain, means that the survivability isn't too bad. If you've got other units to saturate the table with and cause distractions, your opponent is going to not necessarily wipe out your Annihilation Barges straight away, which means you should at least be able to get a few turns sh shooting off with them and cause a bit of damage, at least. Now, speaking of damage, moving on to the weapons, the primary armament of an Annihilation Barge is the Twin Tesla Destructor. It's got reasonable range, 36, which combined with the movement of 12 inches and, like I said, the aforementioned hugging of terrain, you should be able to get it to fire at what you need to fire at, fairly consistently most games. Heavy 10, which is absolutely brilliant. Rolling 10 dice from one weapon system is, is absolutely unparalleled when it comes to fun. 10 or more, and it's brilliant. It also has the Tesla rule, which means that each unmodified hit roll of a 6 causes two additional hits. So you're going to be scoring, combined with those 10 shots, a lot of hits on the opponent. You're hitting on a 3+, plus most of the time, so you're going to be causing a lot of hits on any target that you really want to fire at. The rest of the stat line, Strength 7 isn't too bad. It's, not, it's a medium weapon system, but it has 0 AP on damage 1, and therein lies the biggest flaw of this weapon system. If you're up against light infantry, that's not too much of a problem. You will shred them. You're going to get lots of hits and you're going to cause lots of damage. Orcs, Tyranids, Demons are all going to despise this weapon system. The twin Tesla Destructor isn't so hot when used against things such as Space Marines. And they have two wounds apiece and a three plus armor save. So they're going to be largely tanking all of your hits. And that is a bit of a problem because Space Marines are everywhere. You go into any competitive game, and you're going to be facing off against Space Marines, and you're not going to be causing enough damage with your Annihilation Barges to even be worthwhile shooting at. For the points investment, even if they do come down in a future points decrease, it's just not quite worth it to fire at Space Marines. It could be really good in a competitive sense in the future if the game moves towards having large combat units of hordes, such as Orcs, Tyranids, but we've got to wait for those codex books to come out and see what happens. Looking at the secondary weapon systems, you've got the Gauss Cannon, which has a range of 24, three shots, which isn't bad, strength six, minus three AP, which is very good, and D3 damage. So it's kind of a marine killer, but you're not going to have many shots to really take advantage of it. So it's just sort of a token gesture at that point. 
For me, if I've already got the twin Tesla destructor, I want to double down on having the Tesla ability. So the Tesla Cannon with its heavy 30 range, it's going to be almost the same range as your Tesla Destructor. It's got three shots, so you're now firing 13 Tesla shots. Strength six, which isn't as high as the Tesla Destructor, but against toughness five and below, it's the exact same effectiveness. And it has, again, zero AP and damage. So you're going to be hoping to generate those extra hits and just torrent models off the board. But it's not going to be great for doing that against two wound models. It's going to be okay, but it's not going to be brilliant. There are other choices you can take that would probably do better. So looking at the abilities, it obviously has Living Metal, which can bring back a wound each turn. Not too bad. Command Protocols, which means it is effective within the army as such. Of course, Command Protocols has its own issues, but that's for another video another day. And we move on to Quantum Shielding. It's basically the reason why Annihilation Barges are the equivalents in Dreadnoughts and Tenacity and, and Toughness. They have slightly weaker stats, but because of this, they have a 5 plus and vulnerable save. Also, an unmodified wound roll of a 1 to 3 always fails. So that means LAS cannons and missile launchers are only wounding this on a 4 plus. That is actually really useful, especially with a 5 plus and vulnerable save. It makes you go a lot further with your toughness of 6. And it also means your wounds of 8 isn't as low as perhaps it could be if it was a larger vehicle. Then we have the last two special rules, explodes, which I usually gloss over, but it's essentially what we come to expect. The vehicle can explode if you roll a 6 when it's destroyed okay um it only does a single mortal wound within three so it's not as terminal it's a smaller vehicle it also has hovering which is what you expect again from a, a unit without a base it means that it clarifies where you measure to you measure from its hole or its base whichever is the closest so that's pretty much the easiest way of doing things and you combine that with flies you probably expect on the keywords so moving on to the keywords we have the faction keywords necrons and dynasty again Fairly standard, it's a factional keyword, it's what you expect. And then the more standard keywords, it's vehicle, it's got quantum shielding, which is relevant for a stratagem, uh, fly, which is obviously relevant for hovering, and it's quite useful because it's moving to 12 means it can jump out and leap over into veering in terrain or infantry models that are in the way. And of course, it's an annihilation barge. So now we've gone through the data sheet, what units can support this unit on the table? Well, from characters, there's pretty much just the Technomancer, and even then, it only can do anything when it has a Canoptech Cloak. With a Canoptech Cloak, it can repair a single model D3 Lost Wounds, because it's a Dynasty model within three of the model. It's probably not going to come up very often. You're probably going to go for a Canoptech Control Node, or not even bother, save the points. So, you're probably not going to use it, but it's there in case you need it in the future. Similar manner, the Canoptech Spider, you can potentially repair vehicles using their Fabricator Claw Array within three inches, D3 Lost Wounds. Again, that's not a terrible shout. You might be using that on bigger vehicles, but if you have a Canoptech Spider fairly close to your Annihilation Barge and there's no better target, you can potentially repair it for D3 Wounds, which is always good, especially when it's only going to be wounded on a 4 plus at best anyway. That's pretty much it when it comes to support from other units in the book. There's nothing really which is going to help this unit. It doesn't have core, so it can't get a lot of the benefits from lords and overlords. But, you know, that's what you get for taking vehicles, apparently. If we move on to stratagem support, there's not much, but there is one or two in here that aren't too bad. The first stratagem that sticks out to me is the Malevolent Arkin. For one command point, you're able to turn your Tesla into a mortal wound generator. After making that weapon's attacks, roll 1d6 for each other enemy unit within 6 of the targeted unit. On 4+, plus, the unit being rolled for suffers one mortal wound. So essentially, if the person is clumping up a large amount of his forces together and you fire at the central mass, you can cause mortal wounds to everything around it. And also, you can kind of target characters on 4+, plus and do one mortal wound here and there to characters, which is it's fairly inconvenient and over the course of a game can cause a lot of trouble. For one command point, it's not too bad, and if you have one Annihilation Barge in your army, you've got a great use of a command point for it each turn. The only other stratagem that really jumps out as being useful is Quantum Deflection. Use this stratagem in any phase, so you can use it in the shooting or the close combat phases, depending on what's happening. You can use it multiple times in one turn, which is always good. When a Necron's Quantum Shielding Unit, which is Annihilation Barge in this case, is selected as the target of attack, the invulnerable save goes up to a 4+. plus. So again, that is a very useful stratagem. You might not want to use it on your Annihilation Barge, 
depending on what's happening, but it's a useful stratagem to have and it's recommended. So if we move on to the less generic stratagems and go on to the actual stratagems for particular dynasties, Talent for Annihilation for Mephrit always sticks out. One command point, at the end of the phase, each time a model in that unit makes an attack, an unmodified wound roll causes an additional mortal wound on the target up to a maximum of three. Well, you're getting a lot of shots in, so odds are you're going to get a few sixes on your actual wound rolls as well as your hit rolls, which means you can score extra damage on the target. So that's not too bad, that's one to look at. There's only one other named dynasty that has a decent stratagem that can support Annihilation Barges. If you're going to use it on them, obviously you might choose not to. It's methodological destruction. For two command points, select one enemy unit that was targeted by an attack made by a model in that phase. Until the end of the phase, each time an attack is made by another model in another friendly unit, i.e. the Annihilation Barge, add one to that target's hit roll. So you're basically hitting on a 2+. plus. So target with some warriors or whatever to your main target that you want to fire with your Annihilation Barge and then pop this stratagem and then you'll give your Annihilation Barge a better chance of doing more damage because it's going to generate more hits. Of course, it's an unmodified hit roll of 6 to generate double hits, actually triple hits, I should say, um, an extra 2, but you're still hitting more often. Hitting on the 2+, plus is better than the 3+. plus. Now, looking at the Dynastic Codes, Mephrit, as always, is an effective choice for a shooting attack. If you're within half range, you get plus one to your armor penetration rolls, your AP, which you're not always going to do with an Annihilation Barge, but games can get quite up close and personal, so if you're within half range, all those shots are going to be minus one AP. You can also add three to the range characteristic of a weapon, so it's not terrible on Annihilation Barges, but it's not necessary or needed, but it's nice to have. So that's pretty much all the stratagem support and unit support that Annihilation Barge can use, and that's the evaluation of the weapon systems, how to use these in a game of Warhammer 40,000. As always, target saturation is a thing. If this is your only vehicle or large creature, it's going to get wiped out. That's just how the game is, and that is how things will play out. It's not tough enough to last on its own. If you do have lots of toughness six targets, the opponent has to worry and chew through. You might have lots of Knoptech spiders, you might have multiple vehicles, then yeah, Annihilation Barges are going to be a lot more tougher and a lot more difficult to eliminate because you can't really target them when you're getting other stuff causing a lot more problems. So consider adding these to an army only when you have other units that will distract the opponent and cause a bit of target saturation. If you've got nothing but infantry and you add this in, don't expect it to do very much. Also, don't expect it to do a terrible lot against Space Marines. You want it firing at the weakest Space Marine troops you can find, the ones that are only outside cover with their 3 plus armor save and only have two wounds apiece, so not heavy Gravis units or anything like that or Terminators. And then that way you can just plink away at them and contribute to the game and just be a thorn in your opponent's side. Consider stratagem support in that case I and mean, causing the extra mortal wounds is very nice and it's problematic for opponents. However, it's not as killy. You're not going to kill as many things with this as you might with other units for the same points. And that is probably the biggest weakness. But in a take all, you know, in a take all comers list against infantry, you might find that this unit is a star. I mean, if a horde of orcs are coming at you, you might be generating a lot of hits with something like this. And then all of a sudden, you're doing a lot of damage. Would you be better off taking extra warriors and immortals over this? Its potential is there. But then if you have other units that could potentially take up that target saturation for the opponent, such as the Canoptec Spiders, then the Annihilation Barge can last at the back and just fire from long range and cause the damage you want it to. I don't like to say that anything is worthless, but you do have to work to get the best out of this. I don't think it's a complete waste, and I think it's cheap enough to add into most lists without it breaking the army, but you will be at a slight disadvantage, particularly when you come up against Space Marines, which is the biggest showing in most competitive tournaments anyway. So my advice is hold fire unless you have the point spare. Don't plan to put this in as some big strategic brilliance because you're going to come up against Space Marines and it's not going to do very much. It could take a massive points deduction. It might go down to 90 or less points. 80 points, I would consider this quite a competitive choice, but I don't think it's ever going to drop down that much. So in the meantime, we're just going to have to just make do with this unit. I like the unit as well. It looks good. It's two massive Tesla destructors. It looks brilliant. 
Rolling that many dice is delicious and fun, and it will cause deaths around the table. It will cause trouble. It's just not going to be game-breaking. So just remember that while you play 40k, and you'll have lots of fun. Anyway, that's it from me. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. Please like and subscribe as always. I'm trying to promote the channel, and you guys have been so supportive. It's great. I look forward to speaking to you all soon. Peace out.